aspect of it all, ORSPD. Right. You have these Harvard trained neurosurgeons working on aneurysms, right? That can yeah. kill somebody like that. And if the right tool is not in that tray when he or she needs it. So it's that kind of a, you know, let me bring you into that environment yes. and show you really what your work mm -hmm. is doing. There's a real life person there. Yeah. With his chest cracked open. Exactly. You yeah. want to make sure that surgeon has everything he needs. Exactly. Yeah, most definitely. And then when you're like starting out and you're actually in, in a situation, you know, where you're like, oh, I, I remember watching the video of this, you know, in my class and right, they exactly. kind of just, um, you know, it's, it's a little elevating because it's like, oh, you have this knowledge. You actually got to see it working and and that's yeah no I, I I like it I'll just I get over the gross stuff later so <laughs> there's no, no time to think about the gross stuff just think right. about what's happening and trying to it's not gross it's just beautiful anatomy <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice you and know, pink I I always say if I was one or a student watching a, like a like a being in the OR, like I would definitely be the student in the background going gross or Ew. See, when I was in <laughs> when I was in OR school, when I was in search tech school, I was actually the opposite. I okay. was like, <laughs> it could <laughs> shut me up. Let me get it. <laughs> I was the opposite. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. They had to tell me, dude, you're too close. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you guys a true story. So when I was in Bremerton, Washington, I was stationed up in Bremerton, Washington. I was at a hospital there. Um, I was working in labor and delivery. Patients would come in. I would be one of the guys to get them situated in their rooms, put on the monitor on them, hook them up, check out the baby, blah, 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 put them on the board. They're this son of me, this whatever. That was kind of my job. We monitored the patients vital signs charting. There was a corridor in the back that separated labor and delivery from the OR. And every time I got an opportunity, I would go over there to talk to the OR techs, the surgical mm -hmm. techs, because I was like, what do you guys do? What is this stuff all about? I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. And one of them took a liking to me and he was like, dude, Come here, I'll show you. So he got me into a surgery one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm in there, right? And I'm so inquisitive. I want to know this. I want to know. And they have the back table. And of course, my stupid self not knowing anything. <laughs> what is that one? And I actually touched it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I remember what it was. It was an Avard. Vaginal speculum. Oh, no. I'm like, you know, I saw that big ball on the back of it. And I'm like, what the hell is What do you use that yes. for? So where does this go? <laughs> so I go over there and I'm like, what's that? And everybody's like yelling. I'm like, what you tell? Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I learned after that. I was banned from the OR for about, <laughs> for about oh, a month. <laughs> oh, but then. No. I ended up getting a letter of recommendation um, from the director of that department to then go on to surgical tech school. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, didn't know anything about the sterile field yeah. or any of that. Wow. And um, yeah, that's that's true story. Wow. So is that what you did first before you went into sterile processing? You did you were a scrub tech first? I was, yeah, I was uh, cool. in the Navy. In the Navy, there aren't, or there at least there weren't when I joined. There weren't sterile processing technicians. Yeah. The scrub techs ran sterile processing, mm -hmm. and so we would be assigned to the OR. You're going to be in ortho today for yeah the next two months, and then you're down in SPD for a month. Yeah, and so we learned both, and so okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So getting into sterile processing, here's how I actually got into sterile processing. I was in my later years in the Navy. I was put in charge at the hospital I was at, Naval Hospital Camp Pendleton, 
of supplies. Mm -hmm. So it was my job to purchase all of the supplies for the operating room, including implants, including everything. <clears throat> so when reps, different representatives came into the OR, I was who they were coming to see. I was the person who coordinated them seeing surgeons, seeing nurses, if they had new supplies, new instruments that they wanted to bring in, mm -hmm. I was that first layer that they would come to. So I developed relationships with many different um, reps, right? Mm -hmm. Different company reps. And I'll never forget, I don't know if you know this guy, H, but um, he was my OSI rep. I don't even remember what OSI stood for, but he sold surgical tables. He sold positioning devices for the patient in surgery. There was a whole just bunch of different stuff like that. And one day he came by and he said, I mean, he used to take me golfing out to eat. You know how it was back in the day. Um, he was like, listen, Scripps is looking for um, a manager. He knew that I was going to be getting out soon. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I told Cindy about you. I'm like, who the hell is Cindy? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Apparently, she was uh, the director of surgery there over there at Scripps La Jolla. And um, I got an interview with her, went in to see her. And I'm sitting in her office as she's on the phone. And on her desk is a beautiful 8 by 10 picture of her husband in his Navy captain's uniform. Oh, wow. And I'm like... Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> so, and I was, I yeah. was in uh, no real sterile processing background. I'd never been a supervisor or a manager just in the Navy and that exposure. She liked the fact that I had the supplies background and dealing yeah, with reps sure. and that kind of thing. So that's, that's kind of how it started. Yeah. And my intention really was to, um, was to scrub. Mm -hmm. uh, get on a heart team somewhere and do that. But getting that job just led me into this whole space. Yeah. Wow. Now, now you know my story. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. That, that's yeah. really cool. I've, I've thought about the scrub tech route too. And I thought how mm -hmm. beneficial it would be obviously having this and, you know, start processing information and knowledge, you know, it's a um, cool job. I enjoyed it. Yeah. A lot of standing on your feet, though. And um, yeah. for me, over time, it became very repetitive. Mm -hmm. That can happen. I mean, if you really think about it, when surgery goes well, it's repetitive. It's the same. Sure. You know, when stuff hits the fan is really when <laughs> your yeah. heart gets. But typically, it's like, OK, we got a brain aneurysm. All right, let's go. You know, okay. it's it's like. Yeah. Uh, it it, it kind of got boring. Again, yeah. I was I wasn't on a heart team, which is what I wanted to do. It's yes. hard to get onto one of those teams, like a transplant oh, wow. team or something like that. Oh wow! I never had that opportunity, um, but it can get kind of boring, and you're on your yeah. feet, and yeah, you know, you better go to the bathroom before. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> before your shit starts. <laughs> you could be there for a while. Yeah, yeah, you could be there for a while. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, no, it, it, it seems, it definitely seems exciting and interesting. So, yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Very cool. Well, mm -hmm. I'm glad to know your story now. <laughs> yeah. You know, part of it, you know, part of it. Be careful what you ask, though. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. Well, I guess my last question then just pertains more to what you touched on um, as far as next week being the last class and doing the, you know, the final three chapters. So then you have your book in front of you. I do. Tell me what the last three chapters are. They are uh, surgical implants and instruments. Quick and short. Okay. Transplant and trauma instrumentation. Quick and short. And then loaned instrumentation. Yeah, loaned instruments. So here's the thing. Basically, what I'm going to do is to re-emphasize the inspection points mm -hmm. on, on instruments, which like we've talked about, what this course is really about is 
how do you fully and thoroughly inspect instruments consistently? Right. So that's why we repeat, 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 right? You hear that yeah. stuff all the time. You're not going to sit in this class and learn your instruments. It's not designed for that. Right. It's As you know, it's designed to expose you to instruments. We talk about them. You get to see them, but learning instruments is something you do on your own, right? Yeah. For the most part. Um, so going through those last two chapters, um, we can do all of that next week. Okay. We don't even have to start early. We may go over by 20 minutes or so, 25, okay. but we'll be fine. Uh, we'll get all three chapters in next week. We'll get her okay. done. All right. Absolutely. And then um, what what should I expect as far as, because um, I, um, I know we didn't do a midterm, so then mm -hmm. would I just be jumping over to a final or... We wouldn't do that what, to you. <laughs> what should I? What should so I? So we had that. We, like we, we had that now. <laughs> yeah, we had that conversation today. I yeah. want to share something with you here. Give me a second. I'm going to share with you what you'll be getting here pretty soon. Okay, screen share. Okay. I know I had it open. Give me one second. Like I just have to find it in all this clutter on my uh on my I know it's on here somewhere. H, if you see it before I do, let me know. You know how blind I am. I'm looking for midterm and I know it's on my desktop. I was just looking at it. Um no, 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 no. Yeah, it's down at the bottom right there. Right here. Okay. So this is what we're going to be getting to you. And what, what H and I discussed was we think that giving you this information in the form of study material will be more beneficial to you. Okay. So what we're going to do is to give you, and I'll just give you, a, for instance, let's go over a couple of these. Um, what is the main purpose of the instrument system? Providing a safe functional, providing safe functional instruments when they are needed to keep all technicians on the same page or C, to keep instruments and devices in good working condition. Which one would you say is the main purpose of the instrument system? Well, I would say A and C. And you would be correct if you said just A by itself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, because as you know, sometimes you have to um, take the writer of the two or the more correct yeah. one, right? So to provide safe, functional instruments when they are needed, right? Right. That would be the better of the two. Who performed the first AAA repair in the U.S.? We talked about this. Uh, it, it's mm -hmm. not Homer's, Homer Stryker. Right. Because he created instruments. Right. It's not Dallas Marvick because that's a basketball team. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. so I'm not. So it's not one of those tests where you're going to be pulling out your hair. Okay. And I prefer to give you this as a studying material for you. Let's look at a couple more. Okay. Um, bullying is any behavior that negatively what? Changes the mood, affects staff in a negative way, or makes people emotional. Um, that would obviously be B, right? Affects staff in a negative way. Yeah. And then we have, oh, let, let's see if you can answer this one. The two most common blends of stainless steel are tungsten carbide, austenitic and martensitic, or iron and nickel. You better get that one right. Uh, well, be I would say A and B. Well, you can only choose or B. One. What kind of party do you think this is where you could choose two answers? <laughs> what, what, yeah, what did you D, What did you drink in? Okay. What did you drink in Italy? <laughs> Pernell, scroll up just a little bit for the question. The two the most question common is, the blends two most of common blends of stainless so steel. B. A and B. She chose yeah. the two. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mr. H, you're absolutely 
<laughs> All right, let's see if you can answer 13. A process that uses nitric acid to remove any iron content of the instrument is what? Iron removal, grinding and milling, or passivation? Which one is it? See? You can only choose one. Okay, see? Of course, you're absolutely right. Okay, Check oh, I'm just sweating on that one. <laughs> Well, that you got that right. That's absolutely. Okay. We didn't talk about iron removal. We did talk about grinding and milling right. as a part of the instrument manufacturing process. Uh, but whenever you see removing nitric acid, that's how you create passivation. Right. Check all water sources when there is evidence of spotting or staining on instruments, mm -hmm. stiff instruments, or complaints. You can only choose one. A. Absolutely. Where does instrument maintenance begin? In the assembly area, point of use, or the decontamination area? Uh, B. Of course it's B. We talk about that, and we've been driving that home the whole time, yeah. right? Point of use. What is the servicing or renovation of an older instrument called? Renewing, refurbishing, or servicing? Uh, B. Absolutely. How often should you lubricate an instrument? Well, I would say either A or B, but I'm going to You can only choose one. <laughs> I'm going to go with B. And you would be absolutely right. Okay. Ooh, my hands are sweating. <laughs> you're, you're doing good, though. Damaged, missing, dull, or incorrect instruments placed inside a tray will not result in procedure delays. True or false? Damage, missing. Um, false. Soiled instruments being returned for processing should be identified with? Oh, uh, oh. B. Correct. Failure to monitor dress codes and traffic places people at? Uh, B. Everyone, I'm sorry, eye wash and shower equipment should be available within blank of unobstructed travel time where chemicals are being used. A. Correct. You haven't gotten one wrong yet. Oh my gosh, I'm like sweating. Well, this is just <laughs> an example of what he'll be sending you. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you a couple more. Amy suggests that trays should not exceed 50 pounds for safety reasons. True or false? Uh, true. We may or may not have gone over that. I don't remember. Is that true or false, H? Uh, well, it's true in a way, but it's actually ultimately it's false. 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 Okay. 25 pounds, the, right? He suggests that trays should not exceed 25 pounds. Right, 25 pounds. Okay. Okay, let's like some see. Some of those are pretty heavy than 50, 50 pounds. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm really interested to see if you'll get this one. Oh, God. Work, a workflow diagram to bring a clearer understanding of a process. So remember when we were talking about quality stuff, we talked about a SWOT, right? We talked about process mapping and we talked about performance improvement. Just, now listen to this, the answer is in the question. If you really think about the question. A. Absolutely. Diagram and mapping, right? Right. Sometimes it's process of elimination. Okay. Then we get to stuff like this down here, where you get to identify instruments. So what do you think this first one is here? 51. Well, it looks like it is it a Mets. It's the other M. The other M. So it's a mayo scissor, right? A mayo scissor, okay. Yes. Why? Because I'm looking of this, at the black handle. Be, because of this beveled area right there. That's so that's right. sort of how you identified the mayo. It's thicker than the Mets. When it's a black handled scissor, it indicates that it's a super cut instrument, right? Right. One of the blades is going to have serrations. It's going to be kind of like a saw blade, right? So just remember that anytime you see black handles on scissors, it indicates it that it is a special cut. cut. It's going to have specialty blades. 
So okay. 51 and 52 are male Males. instruments. And what do gold handled instruments indicate? The tungsten carbide. Absolutely. Tungsten carbide. Correct. 100%. Now, oh my God, I'm like sweating through everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, what do you think this one here is to your left? Oh my gosh. So uh you said it initially. Well uh meds, meds and bomb. Yeah. So you see the difference, right? The meds right. and bomb, look at it, it's much more slender. Sharp tip. Mm -hmm. Right? Much more narrow. And that's the first thing. It's it's just not as beefy as the male, yeah. right? Okay. Okay. So and how many then, questions is this gonna have? I'll show you right now. I already see we're going into the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here's your oh, favorite boy. instrument. This is your favorite instrument in the world. So you know what this one is, right? What is it? 65? Oh. Oh, you know the, the, uh, the, oh my God. The starts with the a B. Hemi, the Hemi Laminectomy Retractor. The Williams. Is that what it is? Is that what the name with of the it hinge? is? The <laughs> Hinge? Batman Eastman, maybe? No? Yeah. With the Hinge. Batman Adson Retractor. That's, That's right. right. I was the looking word. at the wrong That's note. Sorry. <laughs> That's a Yeah. Right. right. So it has. And again, that's why I'm saying okay. rather than giving you a test, what we decided to do was to give you this and give you the um, the answer sheets um, so that you can test yourself. Right. Okay. And the goal, of course, is you getting to 100%. Because you're going to take the exam and you're going to take it until you get 100%. And okay. that's when you and that's when you're going to let us know. So we right. have, and we looked at this particular instrument today, mm -hmm. the, the bipolar the ads bipolar. in my ear. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why these two aren't showing up. I think it has something to do with my computer, but they're there. So it has a hundred questions. Okay. Total of a hundred questions. And again, this will be your studying material. And we also have the final, which is also, we're going to give that to you as studying material as well. How does that okay. sound? Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. So okay. one of us will be emailing that to you in the coming days. Okay. That sounds good. I can and then do that. Before you take... Before you take the uh, certification exam, mm -hmm. uh, take an opportunity to reach out to Ken. Uh, okay. You know, Ken Croto, the uh, educator or tutor? Yeah, he's kind of, he's, was he the one that was the tutor when I was doing the CRCST? Yes. Okay. I might, yes. I think, yeah, I still have all my notes and everything from that course, so I can look back. Right. Well, I can give you his contact information. And uh, just what you'll do is just, give him a call or contact him. And what he'll do is he'll just do a little prep, letting you know where to focus in on the uh, the book. So you, when you do your review okay. uh, in preparation, he'll give you an idea. He's already talked to uh, several of our students who have taken the exam and passed it. Mm -hmm. He himself is taking the exam and passed it and stuff. So he can give okay. you a more up-to-date insight as to what's going on with that exam. Okay. Yeah, he talks to everybody who takes it right after they take it. And so yeah. um, you'll be up to speed with the studying materials. And, you know, he'll focus you, like H said, he'll focus you in yeah. on what to really expect on the exam. So okay. far, every, every student who's gone through the course for CIS with Purnell and has reviewed with, uh, with Ken, uh, every single one of them, when they took the certification exam, has passed it. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Pressure. Okay. <laughs> well, we have we have no, no doubt you know, that honestly, you're going to pass it. I think you'll find yourself being a lot more prepared for it than you actually thought. Uh, okay. Understand this: that there are several questions that are going to remind you because they come. The questions come directly from the CRCST exam. Okay. All right. So um, at this point, I would just assume uh, it was more than 50% when I took the certification exam for CIS. 
uh, but uh, uh, they may have changed it for more identification of instrumentation and stuff. But uh, I know when I took it, it, it took me 29 minutes for to answer all the questions. It was, oh, wow. I thought it was ridiculously easy myself. That's because he's super smart, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It took me like an hour and 45 minutes to take my CRCST exam. That's your smart. That's because you're smart, and you take all the allotted time that they give you. Right. Harry was like, <laughs> "I'm getting out of here." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait until you don't go for the CHL, and then you have to compete against me. That one, oh, there, I took, I took uh, start to finish from checking in at Prometrics and walking out 24 minutes. Yeah. No. Yes, it was ridiculously fast. I was just like, "Really? Can what? you make it simpler?" And I made sure that I answered the uh, the questions at the end when they ask, uh, "How did you? How do you rate the exam? Did you feel that it was difficult?" And I was like, "Yes, I felt I found it very challenging and stuff like that." You know, of course they they see how fast I did it. <laughs> oh, oh my god! He's, he's being a smartass. Did you have the answers with you? <laughs> no, it just oh goes god. to show you that. I think he's right. This uh, It's been a while since I've taken any of those exams. But these courses are designed, I mean, you're over over prepared. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you really are. These, these classes could be 30 minutes long. Yeah. But, um, you know, I believe that, you know, you spend your hard-earned money and you should get some really good information yeah and um, you may not need all of it for the exam <laughs> but you never know what you're going yeah. to need for the exam mm -hmm. and then the other thing is it's not just about the exam and i can't teach a course specifically focused on just the exam yeah the, the idea is exam at any time but exactly. it's also in preparation for your knowledge base when you go back into the field and yeah. you're going to utilize that certification to perhaps become a clinical coordinator, a supervisor, Absolutely. manager, mm -hmm. or uh, an educator. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because it will, it will uh, you know, play a factor. Yeah. And then that's when it's really going to go, mm-hmm. Harry did cover that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went in depth on that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So. Okay. Well, you did, you did some time in the sterile processing department. Did mm -hmm. not some of the stuff I talked about pop up in the department and you're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Because I would I would always say, oh, I remember when we, you know, talked about that. Or I remember there was this video that he showed, you know, and when I, you know, for my school. And yeah, so the, there exactly. are. Exactly. A lot of those scenarios that you know do pop up. Of course, they're not as perfect as the ones in the books are, but you know you can still recognize it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then the, the process for the um ex the certification exam it, it's the same. You just go to like the uh, what's it the HSPA website the and you register yeah. and pay exactly. a lot of money for it there, and then you schedule. And what is it? A hundred? Is it hundred and fifty bucks now? Hundred and forty now. Okay. It was think, like when you took your certification for CRCST was uh, one twenty five. Uh, they I, raised it. They raised it to one forty. Every all exams are one forty now. I think when uh, I took it, it was free. Yeah, oh. unless you unless you find out that it's uh, uh, they're doing a pilot. They're updating the exam, and when they do mm -hmm. a pilot, they usually do it for roughly about fifty percent of the cost. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Um, Which means then, you could probably get it for 75 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Um, and then how does, the, and what about like internship hours? Is that something that you guys still provide? Um, or there is no, you for? don't have to, you don't need any internship. You've already completed. Uh, done my time. <laughs> you've already yeah. done your time. The only thing you'll have to do is contact your old supervisor. Mm -hmm. uh, if the form requires that you be signed off, it just contact your old supervisor, and have them sign it off, because okay. it's a uh, current experience within the last uh, five years. Oh, okay. For some reason, I was thinking it was like a year, and so I was actually just having this conversation with my husband because I I'm not 
I'm, I'm actually um, recovering from some injuries that I sustained while working in decon one day uh, in October of last year. And so right. I haven't been able to work. So I was talking to him about that because I thought, oh gosh, you know, I'm going to, I'm approaching the end of the class and, you know, then I'll be able to, you know, start prepping to take the exam, but I'm worried about the internship part because I'm not yet, you know, signed off to where I can go back to full duty. So yeah, there, there's no externship requirement for the okay. CIS. The only requirement is that you have your CRCST. Right. Um, that's okay. the only prerequisite. The if you're asked about surgeries or what have you, this is why we provide uh, surgeries as a part of this course. So you may not have actually been in, you may not have actually been in the operating room, but you have seen, you would have seen at least four to five surgeries um, upon completion of this course. Mm -hmm. So, Angel, where did you do your hands-on experience? At at Scripps. Okay, yeah, so I started I started at Scripps Green, and I was there for uh, gosh, do, 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 six months, and then um, uh, then I transferred over to Encinitas. Okay, so at Scripps Green, was that uh, Ken Hare was the manager at the time? No, uh, her name was Jamie. Okay, so what you can do is uh, here, if you can see my screen right here, the hands-on yeah. experience, it's 200 hours of hands uh, of experience must be completed on a paid or volunteer basis. These hours must be com completed at the time of application and must have been accumulated within the past five oh, years. Oh, I see. And so the fact that you did your 400 hours and you worked four scripts, yeah, then you qualify. Okay. Okay. All you yeah, have, when you print out the form, just get a hold of your old uh, manager. Sure. Uh, or you can get a hold of you know the uh, supervisor manager or script screen to see if they're still there. If they are, yeah. or you find out where they're at, they, they can sign off for you. They don't have to still okay. be in the location. And then oh, they can I sign see. Off for you. Okay. Yeah. Two of the leads that I worked with there are are still there. So. The leads um, can sign off. It doesn't have to be a supervisor or manager. The okay. leads can sign off. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just had okay. to be somebody who is above you. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, this is good to know because I, I was actually, I was a little bit worried about it because I thought, oh my God, I don't know when I'll be able to get back to work full duty. So, oh, you're oh already gosh, qualified. hope this all isn't in vain. <laughs> no, you're already qualified. Okay. Well, that's a, that's good to know. That's a huge relief. <laughs> Okay. Any um, more questions for us? Uh, no, I think that's it. I think that's all sure. my question. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, fantastic. Yeah. We'll see that you next good. week. Yeah, we'll see you next week. It'll okay. be, remember, our last uh, session. Yeah. Um, we will send you, um, it'll say final, it'll say midterm, but don't treat it as such. Treat okay. it as studying material. It'll okay. be a company. You'll have those two with the uh, with the answer sheets. Okay. Attached. So okay, good. And again, you know, we just encourage you to instead of we we actually went back and forth about this instead of bombarding you with the test for each chapter and this and that. Focus on your reading assignments during the week, attend the lectures, and after you're done with this, you know, you set aside some time to test yourself on a weekly basis, every mm -hmm. couple of, of, you know, a couple times a week, if you will. Okay. And, you know, you just get better at it. You get to the point to where you're 100% and okay. you will be on both of these in, in, in no time. Um, and you have that discussion with Ken, um, okay. you're going to be good to go. Okay. Yep. Sounds All good. Right. All right. I like it. Well, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Welcome, yeah. Oh, Angel. and happy late Father's Day, if it applies to, thank well, you. to both of you, actually. Yeah, yes. it does. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So sorry I didn't say it at the beginning, but yes. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All right. Have a nice night.
Bye. All right. Take care. Angel. Bye. All right, all folks. Right. So, uh, as you all know, and I don't know that uh, Mr. Purnell here was aware of it, but uh, we are currently live streaming on uh, uh, in the uh, YouTube for uh, Central Sterilization Solutions. You've all you've seen right now is a sample of the questions that are asked at the end of the presentations, and uh, so we give plenty of time for students to be able to answer questions. Uh, you also got some additional information in regards to how to prepare for the certification, you know, what we do to help you, uh, putting you in touch with our educator. Uh, Purnell is an awesome instructor. So if you are interested in ever taking the course in the chat session on YouTube, I have already put a link uh, to the school's website. So go ahead and check us out and we will talk to you all later. Have anything to say, Mr. Purnell? Not at all. Um, look forward to seeing you soon. We would like to be a part of your success.